I think for me, my father was a carpenter, so I always had tools and material around. So growing up, I was always fidgeting on a job site, making certain things with him. He was also a drummer, so we had musical equipment. So we were always kind of, there was always some sort of, you know, artistic experimentation going on. So for me, it just was when I was young, it just grew from there. I was around aviation my entire life, so it was my father's influence of being around airports and then model airplanes. So I was building model airplanes from the age of like three or four. So putting little snap ties together and then trying to make them look exactly like the airplanes and then really obsessing about those the making from like middle school until I graduated high school. So making probably 30 or 40 model airplanes within that time frame and pretty much mastering like meticulous craft. So that continued into my making now. We all went to Miami University in the sculpture um, department and I think the way we worked, we were always the ones that were there late, always making our work. So it just happened that the relationship grew from there. We weren't like the students that when it became a certain time, you'd leave the studio. So we basically lived at the space and just, oh, yeah. it grew from that. Yeah. Um, I also like always use these guys as like, when I'm working on a new piece, I'm a little nervous about it. I'm like, hey, can I get some feedback? I still do it. Like I'll send photos or like if Jesse swings by, I'm like, do check this out and tell me what you think. So like, just being inspired by the way they work and then kind of feeding off that. Like we just, it was just kind of natural bond where we just felt comfortable working together. I enjoyed the making a lot. But I also, I mean, like Jesse said, I enjoyed seeing everybody interact with it and like talking about it. And seeing that people have that connection with the piece, but like just working with these two guys was just a lot of fun. Like we would have like, air guitar solos and just like 80s hair bands. So like, like the, there was times where we got a little tight in tension, but like, oh man, I remember we had to paint these things and it was like pretty toxic stuff we were using. So we were to get these like all white jumpsuits, like painter suits and like masks. And, like, like hats, man. We, had, we had hats and like, we had to put our buttons to our hats and like, it was just awesome. We just wore them around. It was so much fun. <laughs> so like, I don't know, the, the whole process of it was like a good time. And just working on the we used some pretty thick steel, huge sheets of steel, so it was the first time I think for me I had taken that size material and brought it down and had to form it and use the forge and things like that. So there was still that learning curve that we were that was taking place. And I think for me that was kind of like the exciting point was figuring it out as we go, the process of what do we need to do to, to make it work. Absolutely, absolutely. We all have our own little of what needs to take place and how to do something. Our processes are entirely different, so there's obviously that learning from each other. Absolutely. was the reason why we were together is because we were doing the tree project so we were already I mean they were living together because he lived far away so he would stay with Brandon to do the to do the work during the summer so we were already it was just the three of us and then when he brought up the the uh, locked in it was like well why not continue this I mean so far so good right yeah, yeah we so, didn't even think about it yeah. it was like yep let's just do it and then we kind of just dove in like <laughs> it sounded fun it sounded like it sounds like a great time yeah I mean, I'm excited. Obviously, I think tonight would be the night to get some sleep before we start this. But, you know, three days, uh, the time constraint, 
it's exciting, you know. We're not really sure what's under the tarp that's going to be probably keeping us awake to, you know, yeah. wondering what, we're, what we'll be working with. But, I mean, this has been a year and a half of just going back and forth. I mean, talking. Talk sure, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we're close friends. Like, it's, it's, I mean, obviously we had a tool list. We've been, <laughs> yeah, we've been, we've been working list. on what tools to be for so long, you know. Yeah. Nathan would every once in a while, like, contact us, be like, hey guys. It would be random. Do you remember we got that locked in? I was like, oh yeah, we do have that. When is that? Is that in October? He's like, no, what? It's not in October. We thought we, like, missed it at one point in time. <laughs> like, did we miss that? He's like, no, what are you guys doing? Nathan keep us, keeps, we keeps me on my, like, going forward. I'm uh, a little nervous. Um, like I said before, it's just like a whole new thing for me. Uh, a different medium, so I usually work in ceramic and clay. Uh, the limitation of tools, like we've had this long discussion about like tool lists and like I'm overanalyzing a bunch of things, but I'm really excited. I'm excited working with these guys again because, like, like I said before, the work, the sculpture of the trees we made, like turned out, I, I thought very well, and I had a really good response, and I had that communication. So like, hopefully we can do that again. I think I'm more excited than nervous. I think it's an interesting experience to be loose with process and just just ex like the experience is going to be the best thing about the entire thing. It's being with friends to be able to be in a space and just have fun, see what really can come out of it and really have no major uh, expectations of this thing has to be pristine or it has to be a certain thing. It's just let it be and just have fun with the process. We took the tarp off, <laughs> and our eyes were just like, what? <laughs> I think we realized there was a lot of just random, very random things that you had to figure out, like, how they're going to become uniform with each other, how they're going to make sense. It was that random, it was that kind of, I don't know. It was like somebody literally dumped, just came and offloaded their thing and said, <laughs> We don't know what it is. We were pleasantly surprised though with some of the materials, yeah, like yeah, some, yeah, yeah. some of the stuff we were happy with that yeah. really is obviously informing a lot of the pieces that we're first investigating. So, and the tools that we brought were good too. Yeah. Like all, like the Mod Podge and uh, hardware, like we've used all the tools that we've brought. So everything has been useful so far. I think we knew that we wanted to transform the space from just your typical gallery setting, kind of creating more of a, a physical atmosphere uh, for the viewer to kind of navigate through and explore the pieces rather than just your, your typical setup of sculptures in a corner with a white wall lit up. Mm -hmm. So hopefully with what we're trying to do here, um, you'll see that it's kind of a little bit more of an organic space in the end. Mm -hmm. um, we're like really getting in the viewer space too. Like we're not, we're not letting them engage object. Our objects are like engaging them. It's like forcing them to look at them either through scale, or just placement, or like how we're kind of making them walk through the gallery. We're kind of forcing them in certain directions. Like you, it's not a, it's not a passive sort of thing. Like it's very aggressive and active. I think personally. Absolutely. I think it's how do you stretch the materials that you have? Like what materials are best suited? What what. What is our purpose at that point? Is it a decorative element? Is it a functional, structural element? Like, how can it be used? Because if you have uh, long boards, you might want to build a structure with it or some sort of armature with it. If you have little corks and bottle caps, well, there seems like a decorative element. So I think you kind of have to assort and organize, like, you know, what's going to be their purpose, I think, is the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. And we, we went through a handful of ideas of wanting to build a lot of controlled structural elements with flat sheet, but we didn't have enough material to be able to explore those avenues. So then we started thinking about what else, what do we have enough of that could really be utilized to be able to create this structure. So that's what we started doing with this entrance piece of, instead of using the sheet, sheet goods, we started using the twine. So really having enough of that material to use. I think really you're, you're designing as you go, regardless of like what is back there and, and with what we were given, you're still designing as you go. I mean, you realize that certain things are going to work for certain elements of, of the sculpture. So there, you, we can talk about what we planned on doing. I mean, we did that for a long time and we dismissed certain ideas based on what we had and what we didn't have. But I mean, as you go, you're going to have to kind of stop, reevaluate, is this looking good? Is this the direction we want to go? So it's kind of a spontaneous thing. It's not really a 
you don't get your sketchbook out and, and really necessarily draw exactly what it's going to be like. I think it's more of an organic process. Yeah. And our pieces us. have grown each time. Like we started with like this idea of this like structure coming up and it's wrapped in something like we had an idea then like all of a sudden we're like well what if we put something on the back of it and like that could be cool and then we have this blue light this blue light's cool how can we engage this and then Nathan's working on this and Jesse's figuring out this and like we're just kind of like it starts off with a simple idea then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger which is like really nice which is kind of what you have to do like Jesse was saying when you have all this other stuff you get, you have to work on the, on the go yeah for that matter. yeah and you don't know where puzzle pieces are going to yeah, fit quite yet until you're like oh we have that like we could use that. try to work as a single mind. I think we're, we're pretty open for each other's opinions on what the direction should be. We're always asking, what do you think about this? Will this work? Maybe this works, maybe that doesn't. So you're always going to test each other on your your opinion on the on the design, but also, you know, it has to be, it's a collaboration, so it has to be, it has to be one-minded, uniform, I think. Like, we want to make the best work possible, and like, we pride ourselves on making thought-provoking work so like we want to work and we're, we work pretty well together and I have res total respect for these guys and I like I love their work too so I'm pretty confident in what they're gonna create and it's, but every once in a while like if I'm making something I'm like man I don't know that takes a long time I was like but you don't want to put cloth on this teapot anymore <laughs> this teapot's on all right I won't so like but like, it, it, yeah like just we respect everything people have to say and it just I, it just makes the work stronger it's not negativity it's more like constructive do you guys want to go with this? What do you see for this space? And then you just kind of your idea grows from that as a team, as a, as a, as a unit. So, I mean, that's just the way we've been doing it the whole time. It hasn't been like individual things, like oh, you take this corner of the gallery and hopefully it works and combines and can mesh with this. What I'm doing, it's all, you know, we're one unit just working the working the space. <laughs> I mean, it just kind of depends on the space. I would say like each space is unique. So. Like we spoke about earlier, uh, Jesse touched on this. Like we looked at our objects, and then we came out here, and like talked and talked, and like really tried to figure out where we were going with it, and like the size uh, restraints, and we were, had like clearly material restraints, and like we wanted a concept that would make the, everything kind of unified and coming together. Um, so I mean, it depends on the space. So we kind of tackled it just by acknowledging the corners and like the floor plan of like yeah. the work stuff, what yeah. we had. I think that when you come to a space that you're gonna work in, you're, the space almost dictates, like what you're saying, dictates where you're gonna go and what you're gonna create for the work that we're doing here. Right. You know, it's not like we came in with like, well, we're gonna have this four-sided thing and then we're gonna do this and this is where it's gonna go. I think the space needs to kind of dictate what you're going to create because you're, I mean, it's in an environment, so the environment is just as uh, important as the object that's being looked at or being shown. 
I think that's the philosophy behind it is it, it all has to kind of meld together. The space, the object, everything has to kind of come together for it to make sense. So it's not sterile, it has to be active. And also you know? just keeping in mind the viewer, like we're really thinking about where where the viewer is and what they're seeing first, how they interact with objects and how they need to be positioned in space and how we control them. So really controlling the viewer from the entrance all the way through the entire gallery. So not just allowing them to enter in a typical space. So it's still control and unpredictability, I think, in space that we're really focusing on in spaces that we might not necessarily like. So the light area that we're playing with this closet and really changing and transforming. So I think everything that we've already touched on. Well, even before we came yesterday, we had spoken about the importance of creating pieces that kind of, that the space dictated, creating the atmosphere. That was our main goal coming into it. No matter what we were given, it wasn't about making a singular or multiple objects to place around. It was all about transforming the space, no matter what was given to us. We were gonna make that material, transform the space. So I think for me, when I went home, I mean, then I could finally see the space and kind of visualize in my mind what might work, but you really don't. I don't think you really know what you're gonna do until the material is actually there. You have a floor plan, you have square footage, but that doesn't mean anything until you see the material. Intimidation, not at all. I mean, it's you're, 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 you have that like apprehension of like, okay, what's it gonna be? You know, you got the you know Christmas morning feel, but it's like you're more excited about what it's gonna be and what you can actually make and manipulate. I think that's the, the best part. I was basically like opening the box, looking through, and like you guys take the uh, next box. Dude, I was, I was trying to get to as many presents as I could. Cause it's fun, you're searching, you don't know what the next box has and what it's gonna be and, yeah. you know. So you're, you're already generating ideas and like, when you see like a bag of cork, you're getting this like multiples process in your head, a repetitious process. So you just wanna see what the next you know, box is gonna have for you. We're kinda controlling where they can look at things, but we would still wanna have them be able to explore the work and not feel like it's sterile or kinda like, um, forced or something, you know, we want them to be able to engage it and have fun with it, but we don't want it to be kind of like, oh, well, I'm going to go here, i got to go here, just kind of run through it. We wanted them to spend some time and, like, contemplate some stuff. The process of discovery, for sure. There's no question about it. I mean, we just spoke five minutes ago of the possibility of having something on this wall that kind of gravitates and, and connects to another piece. Is that going to take place? Man? until you get to the next step, who knows, you know. That's the fun part about it though, is you don't really know what you're gonna, you know, we don't know what it's gonna look like, you know. We didn't know what that was gonna look like, and you know, so far so good, you know, happy with it. It's the exciting factor. We wanna be, we, we, I mean, we want them to be excited when they come in. We wanna make it and be excited. We don't just wanna sit here like we're, you know, workers and just working away, you know. It's, it's really fun to see the way the pieces are evolving. Um, like we kind of have a, a pretty s solid idea of where they're going, but they still are just evolving. And each time, like Nathan strings up a piece of line, it's like, man, like the starburst is looking good. And after each weave or rotation that Jesse's going through, and we're tightening it up and everything, it's like, man, it's really starting to feel this visual weight. It's feeling heavy, but it's like made out of this like thin twine. So like the pieces are growing, but we still kind of we have like a final destination so far, you know. So it's 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 exciting to see them. A loose come together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very loose. A very loose blueprint, I think, mm -hmm. is the best way to put it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we'll see. That. Well, I mean, I just hope that when the, the, when the viewers come, I mean, they're just as excited to see kind of what took place as as much as the process that we've been going through. You know what I mean? I hope it's not just they come in and they see an object and say, like, oh, I can okay, yeah. and they move the next one up. I kind of, I want that playful navigation, like as much as we're having. I mean, we're still navigating the space as we work. So we're, we're, we're being able to kind of, to have those emotions. And I kind of, I'm hoping that, you know, it's alluded to the, to the view as well.
I just think we were at like a point in the work that we didn't have to negotiate ideas and kind of, we already had the, the, the plan in motion, then it was just execution. I think we were able to just kind of push the execution and then it just you know, spawned real fast, you know what I mean? There weren't the slow moments. Before, when you had to figure it out and kind of understand what's going to take place and is it going to work, this, you know, it obviously slows you down. But I think the five, five hours you were gone and we were able to get more work done, those problems were already solved. So it was just straight, just knock it out, I think. Yeah, we've already, we've already failed a few times yeah. on trying to get stuff up on that wall. So it was just throw it up and get it going. Just commit and just get it up. Finish it. I just, since like, I've been inspired by all the donations we got, and I was like, I really wanted to incorporate the objects somehow, not necessarily just because of like, what they are, like, I wanted just to use their form and like, use them in some one of our pieces. So we were trying to stretch canvas over, over the form, and that was just not working. And then we tried to just use the canvas, because that was donated, and that was just not working, but somehow we weren't lining up anything. Um, so we just started hot glue and then like putting things up on there. And then uh, I experimented with this hodgepodge stuff earlier in the week. And we just started painting on and pulling, stretching paper over it. And then we were talking about color. The white just made sense because it's kind of like lays everything back, kind of unifies it with the rest of the space. Uh, we just kind of went for it. I struggled with it the whole time we were doing it. You can ask these guys, I was complaining. Not complain, but it was like, man, I don't know. We're part of I'm sure. Yeah, I'm like, we hot glue, we got the stuff glued up there, and it's all hodgepodge. I'm like, we really can't take it down. I'm like, are you sure? Like, like, just do it. And like, they were helping me. He was help Nathan helped me a lot, and Jesse's helping me paint. And it's like, fine. So they really pushed. They really I mean, pushed me to keep going. It's a three dimensional painting, which we don't really do. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's definitely new. So. The uncertainty of it. is the execution going to be right? Yeah. Is it going to look right? Yeah. And like I was, Nathan was running like we were trying to figure out the wires and stuff. And I was just like, man, I don't know. Like, are we going to ruin like this really cool like blue piece? I'm like, is it just? Did I just screw this whole thing up. Like, should, I, should I just like start scraping it? I don't know. But um, I'm happy with it, and I think everything that we did on it, it started. To, it's really starting to come together, which is cool. You said it before, where it was like you have your your two-dimensional plane and then we're breaking the surface of the two-dimensional plane and going into three dimension mm -hmm. and then it's going to be framed out like a two-dimensional piece traditionally would be so it's almost like you're just we're like crossbreeding what the traditional expectations are I guess mm -hmm. and also breaking expectations we're going to be placing a frame framing out the light and then the two three-dimensional collage is going to be existing outside of the frame so it's going to be have a weird play in space. So I think it's a weird thing, but I think we're really embracing weird and just letting letting it go mm. and just having fun with the forms. Yeah. Yeah, that hasn't affected me. And no one's even commented on the fact that we're just still in the same space and oh my God, we need to be, there's no, you know, the outside world hasn't even come up yet. Like I'm, I'm used to living in galleries for two or three days installing my work and installations and they've been in that experience with me for a couple days. So I don't think it's a new thing for us to be actually immersed in an environment and have no connections to the outside world until we go and eat or go home, so. Yeah. We're talking to you.
<laughs> but, but the difference with that, with what you're saying, right. is that he has his set pieces. We understand right. how long they're going to take. We know what the final thing's going to look like. You right. can plan it out like that. You know right. your time frame. Here, I'm yeah. starting to feel like the the time is coming quick for us with pieces that aren't really finished yet or haven't even been kind of like realized to their extent yet you know so we're still creating as you're going and then you're crushed with the time that's where I'm feeling some pressure like you were saying earlier that you're having pressure already from the beginning I'm getting a little bit of that I think yeah time sinking in especially like because we I mean we know we're gonna face troubles and problems with like our larger scale work um, and like really intricate stuff like the weaving we're doing like it's really intricate and then all of a sudden like this really fine rope is starting to weigh a lot like it's starting to get heavy heavy so we're trying to we're problem solving that trying to make it come together but then we realize like we only have like a day left before we're in trouble <laughs> like, like before are, we're done like are the ideas up. gonna are they gonna finish can we finish the ideas really
slowly checking off Nathan and just cranked out a pretty pretty stellar piece like smaller scale and so we're starting to like we're starting to shrink size to bring viewers up to the wall because right now we have them like basically from the floor like as soon as you enter you're attacked by that and then over here it's like not really a wall piece it's more just like another installation so now we're looking to like bring people to the wall in, the, in like a more dramatic way than just like art like you know like we're trying to like find other ways to like obstruct the viewer so they have to like investigate through other like loopholes and stuff like that. So those are starting to come together as like we're having breaks on our bigger stuff. I'm like we're using the blue light as like the paint and the canvas. So like when we frame it, we're kind of like solidifying that. And like the wall's more organic now and it feels more organic. And then we have like these very linear, linear like structured things like piercing through it, piercing into this painting, into this light. So like we were kind of like breaking this dimension of some sorts, which is like pretty intriguing for having random materials that we're just kind of all like experimenting with, yeah.
I think yeah, that's, that was that was the original plan. We were we were thinking about engaging just the space, and then it really just evolves into changing that space and allowing the light, changing the light, and then creating this framework around it. And it went from these arcs to this diamond shape and now to a rectangle of how the viewer sees it. So it's it's evolved and changed, but that's pretty much been in the plan the entire time of projecting into it and then the ray coming off of it was a thought after the projection, the space really started to evolve. I like the idea and like even the craft with our limited time was still like, like no, nah, we can't sacrifice that. It's still gotta look good, it's gotta feel good and so they feel really strong and just like, I don't know, uh, like we, we've been working pretty well together, I'd say, like really well, like bouncing ideas off of, and we keep pushing people, and like, it's, been, it's been good. Just to not go for like the directly obvious thing, or, like when you hit a roadblock, that like we come together and like we brainstorm or like we'll talk like screaming through the room, like we just don't, you never let, like if someone like trips up or falls or like, like I said, I was really unsure about when we were working on this and like, I was like, man, I don't know. Like, we just kept pushing each other. Like, man, it's gonna be all right. We just gotta, we just gotta keep through it. Like, they, they were like, man, we can see it. Like, it's gonna be good. Just keep working. And I don't know if they were just trying to like keep me out of their way or what, but <laughs> it worked. So I was like, it was cool. And like, I don't know. Whenever we run into like an issue, we're always not afraid to be like, hey, like, I just can't figure this one out by myself. And then usually when we come together, we we find out something that works pretty well, really well. I mean, it's happening with the weaving piece. Yeah, like, absolutely. There was a total just wall that I hit at least as far as where to go next and what's going to look aesthetically pleasing. Mm -hmm. So I came over here to help with this just to have a break and be like, you guys need to come over here for a few minutes when we want to get back to it. Let's just, you know, we need some, we need new ideas. So hopefully they come still. Yeah. We still haven't got there yet. <laughs> Work on it. Work on it. Actually, not at the beginning. We knew we were going to have some sort of object in there that you were going to... We were going to give the viewer a gift of you're going to look in there, here's something to look at. What it was, we didn't know until we had at least a foot, I think, of the weave. Yeah. And then we realized, well, we should probably think of what object to put in there before we make this huge, you know, conical shape that we can't get to. And then we were just like scavenging around and found little pieces to throw together and boom, found some bone. Can't go wrong with bone. Yeah, and like the shape of it, just like held it up, he's like, look at this. I'm like, yeah, man, that's an awesome shape. And he's like, I found this bell. I'm like, yep. <laughs> like, dude, those work. And you're like, what about this? I'm like, perfect. Make it. And then made it. And we stuck it in there. And like, like, yes. Works awesome. When, like when you found the, the turnbuckles and you placed them and we were trying to find what would work, it's just like, oh, how perfect. You know, how easy and simple was that, and it looks amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, things that I think aren't overthought to try to get some sort of like con super conceptual meaning, you got the simple things that I think kind of are just as effective, in my opinion. Yeah, conceptually and aesthetically. Like, not only are they conceptually and like thought out, but like aesthetically, you're like, man, that just looks cool. Like, you forget that it's bone. Yeah. Uh, I think it's being discovered, but obviously, I think that this weaved piece is going to kind of find its way into this open area and then somehow feed up onto this wall in some manner. Uh, maybe it's a large space, huge open wall, it's screaming for something. Mm -hmm. We were talking about projection as well, so maybe engaging some space with some still, an opaque projector, just projecting right an image right on the wall, just still static. Uh, I think our plan is still in place of navigating this viewer through the space and potentially going overhead or going under the feet, making people step in and around and engage the space in different ways. So I think that's still my goal. I think it's still everyone else's mm -hmm. goal of mm -hmm. connecting all the pieces, making them cohesive, not just two or three isolated pieces in space. Like we really want everything to feed off of one another and really feel integrated. Mm -hmm. and not just isolated. I mean, I think just today was, it felt good to get more done. You know, we at least feel like we're close with one piece being in its final stage. The other big piece is, it's getting closer. So I think that 
there's that feeling that we're getting somewhere. We're not just treading water, but there, I think for me, there's still that gut feeling of like, you know, it's coming quick. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I do see like Nathan's like making some s smaller scale stuff, and like J uh, Jesse added a lot to the weaving project, and um, like, just a lot of more weaves, and like it's really starting to feel like the show is starting to like I can kind of envision it better now. Before, like when we were in the beginning stages, of, like man, I don't know, like we have like we got a blue room, and we got like two and a half feet of weave, man. <laughs> like, We'll see what's coming, but like we've, they, we've really been cranking, cranking stuff out, and like it's starting to come together. Like the ideas are, when they like the ideas like actually start to work out, you're like, all right, cool, let's keep going. Because it makes you learn in process instead of having a predetermined goal. Like you really have to react and figure out how the making is going to make sense, like how you're going to make sense of all the objects, the space, and how you control or let craft go, how you allow the objects to exist and interact with individuals in space, and how you can transform and make things unpredictable. I think that's something that I've said before as well. So really be loose with process and let go of any like heavy uh, content that might be having to be in all of their work to where it's just have fun and be a kid. So I think that's, Brandon and I were talking about that earlier and just letting loose. No pun intended. Tied up all the loose ends on uh, <laughs> our piece, um, our woven piece in the, in, the, in the front of the gallery, which is a really good feeling because we, we were really struggling with that during the day, trying to figure out how to complete it and how to make it look right. We also finished up this piece with the frame and the painting, the white paint. So this piece is completely done, that piece is completely done. So we finished two large pieces plus several smaller ones mm -hmm. yesterday too. Mm -hmm. So that, that was good, that felt real good. I was just playing. I was just going for it. Uh, you just think about portals. Like I have vocalized a few times of trying to get the viewer to view the pieces in a certain way and control them or allow them to discover. So I think that's all of the pieces that I wanted to confine the viewers a little more. It's not complete. It still needs to have some tweaking of actually viewing something. So. We still have a little time and work to get into that, but um, just trying to just throw something quick together and just see how it worked. 
utilizing process materials that have existed in a couple other pieces. For this tomorrow morning, early, like two or three, hopefully not later, but maybe later. But I'd rather have it all tied up so we're like, we're good. So we don't have to be freaking out when we wake up and be like, we have all this to do in an hour. Like, we're done. And then we get to sleep for a little bit and wake up and say thanks. I, mean, I think the pieces that we have left aren't like the pieces that we ran into trouble with. Like, there was a lot of troubleshooting on the piece by the door. Like, a lot of troubleshooting and failure. And, you know, with the pieces I think we have left, I don't see that happening. I think we have like a very good idea as to what it takes to finish it for it to look how we want it to look and then incorporate the small. So, you know, I could understand if we were gonna still be figuring out as we're going and, 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 and trying to problem solve things, it could take till nine in the morning, absolutely. But uh, I think those, I think those uh, moments are behind us. Mm -hmm. We did that last night. That was a 3 a.m. one. Honestly, I, it confirmed me, like I knew what we could do I didn't know how we were gonna do it because I didn't know what materials we had, but I knew like our potential coming into this could be something really fascinating. And like just seeing what we have now, it's like, yeah. Like we can take a bunch of stuff that some might be just discarded by others and some is maybe more precious to some, but like we just kind of came in and we found it and we're like, we can make out of anything. Because none of this stuff is really our medium at all. Like I'm ceramic, you're more metals. Like. You do a lot with metal and um, these like shrink wrap and wood and like so like all this is kind of like out of our comfort zone so it's like really uplifting for me to be like we came in and just took whatever we could and make some pretty killer art out of it which is awesome. I think we knew what the process was going to be like going in and since our stuff for this exhibition is site specific, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I think that the expectation is right where we thought it would be. Uh, obviously not knowing what materials we're gonna get, but what would come out of it, what we would gain from it, I think we're hitting the mark there. Uh, I mean, obviously we're not making pieces that you could have made anywhere, and you just bring in, and you vacuum the place where you want it, and you set it down and light it. You know, this is very installation, uh, site-specific stuff, which you know, I think makes it more engaging, just for that matter. I think the people that come by, and drop off the lovely uh, foods, uh, see that too. I think it was an unexpected thing on, on their part too. I think they might have been thinking, you know, because for the most part they think we're in the back room building these sculptures and then we bring them up into the gallery. But I think we have maybe spent maybe 5% of the time back there, you know? So process wise, this is, this is what we wanted. I think that we're totally stoked on how it went what's come of it, and really what the final thing's gonna be like. I think we can sleep knowing it's gonna be awesome. Yeah, I will, because I'm gonna sleep anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna sleep. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm satisfied. I'm happy with the process, like losing control of the actual medium that I'm used to and that we're all used to. I think it's just something that we've all embraced and just went head first into it and just just went loose, just let everything just flow and collaborate. Like, instead of just creating isolated objects on pedestals and bringing them and lighting them, we were able to talk. Like, you can see what each of us has done in each piece. It's not just one person's idea running the entire way, getting feedback and allowing these things to blossom and really evolve into something much more interesting uh, than just one person's creative mind. So really embracing that. So yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm proud of what we've done and I can't wait to see the entire thing lit and polished and clean and allow everyone to come and appreciate what they've donated and what we could do to present to them.